Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to express my gratitude for the possibility of attending the meeting. This is very important and unique to me. Uh, when I saw the information at Facebook that this initiative has been created, I become all eager because I believe that this is very much needed in Europe. And I got a, a, an instant reply to get in touch with you. I've been living in Sweden for almost 20 years. It will have, sorry, 40 years. It will have been 40 years next year. And I'd like to say a few words about uh, taboos in Sweden from uh, the perspective of a person who spent most of their lives and the family's lives there. We've been raising children. Um, as a professional, uh, I work in a different field. I work in ICT. Uh, I have always been dealing with uh, uh, the integrations of control systems that uh, should not break down in order not to harm anybody. However, parallel to that, I have felt a great responsibility for my family and upbringing children. Being myself a Catholic and a believer, and I've always had this uh, strong uh, feeling of the sense of a family. Uh, Sweden is a very important country. In the 70s, uh, when I uh, landed there, when I was working in Ericsson, I discovered that these people have very strong uh, traditions, uh, speaking about sincerity, uh, work, responsibility. Uh, that uh, was quite striking. They were quite willing to cooperate. A very open communication form whenever they were seeking any kind of solution. After open discussions, you open modus operandi and people cooperate. Uh, there's nobody that goes upstream. So this is something really wonderful when you look uh, from the perspective of a professional. Uh, Sweden boasts extensive uh, achievements as far as technology is concerned and it has its impact on the world. With respect uh, to ideas, Sweden is present everywhere in the United Nations organizations. They had the chairperson, uh, devout Catholic, uh, who was trying to present uh, what they believe in also at this arena. This is very important. So ever since the beginning, I've been trying to find myself in this ecumenical cons. Uh, uh, and Ericsson, I could see a poster with a big uh, letterhead, number one, and there was Jesus, join us, and there was the address of a meeting place. So there was a group of people, every Wednesday they prayed after work, which came as a surprise to me. I went there, and there was a dozen or so people, and there were different denominations, uh, the National Church, or Lutherans, it is no longer called this way. It is no longer called the National Church, uh, the Pentecostist, uh, and we were praying in that meeting. And it was quite interesting because we were praying for the company to do good business. We were not praying for a, a private means, so a good understanding was very much placed in this context. So it is a word of introduction. And now... Uh, I'd like to refer to Anna was speaking about. Anna's was a great speech with regards to uh, the problem of secularism and how secular the uh, general public has become. It has been huge secularization. These were extensive changes from my point of view, uh, not beneficial to religious life. Uh, many people lost their faith, uh, so this is what I could see. Many companies fell apart, so there's this, we can call it a plague of uh, divorces. Children became demoralized. I'm speaking about something that is most characteristic, uh, but taboo, abortion. 
abortion touches everybody's heart, but if we boil it down to an intellectual discussion, we discover, oh, that's not a problem. There's a cluster of cells which means nothing, and this is what children are taught. In a regular school, there is a nurse who gives pills uh, uh, for girls, uh, anti-conception pills for girls. Once a girl is pregnant, uh, even the girl's parents are n not allowed to be informed. And um, a girl may undercome abortion, be it a mechanical or a chemical one. And it exists in the general public's awareness like nothing serious. It's like a visit to a dentist or a hairdresser when you change your hairstyle. And there's practically nothing you can do unless you reach out for drastic means. When I had more time, because I retired last year, when turning uh, 67, I decided to retire, though I did like my work, and I still believe that my profession is excellent. And I started to delve into people's problems more. So against this backdrop, when you um, uh, go out protesting, uh, you show uh, pictures which... Uh, depict uh, little people that have lost their lives in abortion. It makes a great impression on people and it's remembered. And this is a chance for a very interesting discussion. And for example, a young man comes up and says, are you against abortion? And we say yes. How about a rape, for example? I believe that you understand that a child should be aborted. And I say, think twice. There's a the perpetrator, the way of the action, uh, action, so this is the criminal case, and there is the victim of abortion, a woman that uh, has gone under, through this traumatic experience, and uh, the child who is an innocent human being that was given life. A perpetrator might uh, escape without punishment if somebody is caught, um, it is repudiated, um, if sentenced, sometimes small sentences. We have seen uh, other cultures members' cases, they were not persecuted at all. And who is sentenced to death penalty? This innocent child. And I said, uh, never ever have I thought about it, that's quite interesting, I need to think about it. And they go away. Sometimes we see aggressive reactions. Uh, what I'm speaking about is your attitude that needs to be personally involved. You need to help out in a case. It's not that costly. Uh, sometimes you might get called. Uh, there was a Pope uh, visiting our arena. We were standing there for seven hours. It was raining. The police were okay. And when people passed over and the police people came up, we tried it to become warmer, and they uh, were taking pictures of our exhibition to show it to our colleagues, possibly. Uh, um, you know, it was quite interesting to see, because it was not politically correct to see the police people taking photos of what was exhibited at our exhibition. So this kind of action is a nice trigger for ecumenism. Traditionally, Catholics were not that popular in Sweden. There were lots of negative uh, uh, attitudes, because this is a historic tradition. And I believe that both parties go this way, because in other countries, Catholics were not that tolerant to other denominations. We could see that last century. In this meeting, this is a very topic. A topic. Uh, are there two topics that I'd like to refer to, but I'm about finishing because I'm running out of time, is forced uh, child take. Uh, this is uh, another taboo topic, like abortion. Sometimes uh, Polish journalists like Zaremba was writing, there was uh, Mm, uh, an epileptic boy that was uh, hijacked because, um, you know, uh, parents uh, did not know that and this boy died. Uh, lots of uh, information for a short period of time, nothing happened. I became one of the volunteers and 
I met, uh, I, I learned a very interesting method. Writing articles, uh, it makes no waves, as a matter of fact. Nothing changes. The system does not change. Scureto Credvisa, Law and Justice, is the organization, what a coincidence, is the international um, informal organization. It takes no grants for anybody. It's only supported by the voluntaries in order not to be dependent on anybody. For many years, this organization um, has cooperated with the best lawyers, judges, psychologists, uh, MDs, has collected materials. And very often they win in courts because um, they show where the war, law was violated by uh, the clerks. Only recently a motion has been filed uh, for the Human Rights uh, Tribunal, and it will be front page news information because they have got excellent evidence that living witnesses. So this is the mode of operation. The government got scared away because they had been informed without any reactions. But our people were protesting. And all of a sudden the government hears there's something going on in Brussels and they try to do something. They decided to change the laws and uh, they consult us on changing specific paragraphs. What kind of power is in the hands of a, a clerk? And she may uh, disrespect uh, uh, central court's right because she takes away children. We want to change the laws, but this is not enough. But the method that we've been using makes us really efficient when we use professionals to lead to a court trial. And let me finish with that.